Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Tabor College here in Hillsborough, Kansas, where the Lady Blue Jays are at home for the first time in about a month. The last time they played here was against Kansas Wesleyan, exciting five-set exciting five set match. And they have been on the road at several tournaments since that point. And we're sure glad that they're back home today. Hosting the Avila University Eagles. Tabor College comes into the contest with an overall record of eight and 13, and they're one and one in conference play. Tabor got off to a really good start in the conference, upsetting McPherson, one of the trendy picks to do well in the conference. Picked, I believe, in the top three in the preseason. Tabor picked down towards the bottom, and they come in, and, and after two sets where Tabor did not look very good, just to be quite honest with you, getting beat. 25-13 uh, and 25-11, the Blue Jays showed what they were made of by storming back and really handling the Bulldogs those last three sets to start conference play with a victory. Next match, they went to Kansas Wesleyan, who was their last match here at home, and here at home they lost to them in the five. After winning the first two, uh, the Blue Jays couldn't hold on, and I think that must have woke up Wesleyan because they played well up there against uh, Tabor at, at Salina and beat us in three. So Tabor's going to be looking to get back on the winning track tonight. Avila University comes in at 0-1 and 10-11 and on the season. Their loss to one of the top teams in the conference. As you see our standings there is Bethany is a little bit of a surprise being, uh, well, not that they're 1-0 in conference, but that they're 14-4 and overall, a program that struggled last year. Uh, is on the right track this season so far. Southwestern sitting there at two, uh, tied with University of St. Mary, Ottawa, Franz, and KW all are one and zero in conference play in this young season. McPherson and Tabor are tied for seventh right now, and actually Tabor would have the tiebreaker over the Bulldogs at this point. Oklahoma Wesley and Avila Sterling, York, and are all zero and one, and Bethel, who started hot over at the Fall Fling and looked really good. Uh, come away with a couple of victories over there. Have uh, yet to find their first conference win, and they're 0-2 and 4-11 and overall. See Coach Ganow, and here is in, in the first year of his tenure here at Tabor. We got two first-year coaches. He's in his first season, and Eric Majors is in his first as well. So two programs looking to get on the right track here tonight. As we're seeing some teams warm up, and there's Coach Ganowan directing traffic here for the Lady Blue Jays. This Tabor team has got the talent. Under first-year coach, they're still trying to get used to how he wants things done, and they're trying. he's trying to get used to how to put the right combinations out there. Um, like any team trying to find their way, they look really good at times, and they look like they're trying to find their way at times. So uh, hopefully tonight will be the first of those two looking really good here at home we're expecting a good crowd i know uh talked earlier with coach duel and he said his swimmers will be here we saw some of the student activities people getting the student section ready to go uh, so hopefully we'll have some uh, a good number of students here this evening to cheer on our ladies as hopefully we'll come out of here with a victory and move to two and one in conference play and get a little closer to even on the year at nine and thirteen a little bit about our season so far. Our, our team has played nationally ranked teams. Uh, they've played really good teams. And so an eight and 13 record, some may think, ah, they're struggling. And, and we may be at times, but if you look at who we've been playing, our ladies have competed very well. Uh, they've not given up in any matches and they've been right in there. So hopefully that will pay off down the road by uh, playing some tough teams now that we're into conference play. Just a couple of highlights here to watch as we uh, move forward. One of the better players in the conference from Avila is Caitlin Payen. And Caitlin is number seven. She is 11th in hitting percentage, fourth in kills per set, number one in overall kills. So we're going to get somebody up in the net and block her and take care of her up on the net if we're going to be successful this evening. Some of the Taylor, Tabor players that are in the top 20 in the conference. Kills per set, Taylor Quering is ninth at 2.6, and Marissa Grauf is tied for 14th at two, with 2.3. Kills overall, Taylor is 17th with 149, and Marissa is 20th with 142. 
assists per set, fourth in the conference, up to, up towards the top of that. Samantha Smith at 7.4, and the overall assist, Samantha's fifth in the conference with 427. Blocks, Olivia Dirksen is tied for 19th in the conference with 37. Diggs, the freshman, Marissa Sandoval, with 222 digs per set. Sandoval is 10th at 3.7, and Monet Ortiz will be our libero this evening to start, will be at 2.8. Service aces per set. Sandoval is there as well as an eighth with 0 0.4, and service aces is Sandoval 10th with 21. As we're going to, I'm going to take a break here for just a minute as the public address announcer, and Mr. Mike James, will um, get things rolling. We'll have a prayer from Dr. Carol Hunt and then the National Anthem. We'll be right back. set the lineups first for the visitors, the Avila University Eagles. Again, they come in the contest with an 0-1 KCAC record, 10 record overall under first-year head coach Eric Majors. Starters for Avila tonight, number two, Katie Marshall, 5'9", senior from Greenfield, Missouri. Number 24, Kate Warren, a 5'11", junior from Great Bend, Kansas. Number six, Chloe Brundick, she'll be the setter, 5'5", freshman from Labadee, Missouri. Number seven, we talked about Caitlin Payne earlier. She'll be a 6'1 freshman from Victoria, California. Number 18, Delvian Williams, sophomore, six foot tall from Leewood, Kansas. Number 23, Savannah Stevens, a 5'8 senior from Freeburg, Illinois. And their libero this evening will be Aspen Cridner. She is a 5'8 junior from Goddard, Kansas, just down the road here from Hillsboro. Now let's take a look at our Tabor College Blue Jay starters for tonight. We mentioned earlier one of the, the leader, leading setters in the league, number one, Samantha Smith, 5'4", senior from Greeley, Colorado. Number two, the freshman, 5'6", from Albuquerque, New Mexico, Marisol Sandoval. One of the seniors getting the start. Number four, Marissa Groff. She's a 5'10", senior from Corn, Oklahoma. Number 11, Taylor Quering, 5'9", sophomore from Bradshaw, Nebraska. Olivia Dirksen, number 16, six-foot junior from Gossel, Kansas. Rounding out the starting lineup for the Blue Jays, number 20, Brittany Hebert, a 5'11", sophomore, also from Gossel, Kansas. 
And you see the libero, 5'3", senior from Lakewood, Colorado, Mane Ortiz. You see our coaching staff on there as well, Mr. Marshall Ganow, and again in his first season. Marshall comes to us from Southern Oregon University. Tisha Worth, it's glad to see her back tonight with the team. She's been out for a little while with a family situation, and we, we're glad she's back with us tonight. And then our graduate assistant coach, great, very good player for us last few years here at Tabor, Tiana Frizzell. And we have our officials for tonight. See so our R1 up will be Michael Olson, and number R2 is Scott Ingles. Josiah Ray and Jordan Horstick will be our line judges. This will be Bailey Kaufman will do the scorebook. Keenan Lowen will be the libero tracker, or they can switch at whatever they'd like to do. Riley is on the clock tonight. Again, our public address down there is Mike James. Uh, Lance Carter and his crew will take care of the stats tonight as he's our volleyball SID. And we can't forget the all important ball rollers who keep the action going. That'd be Maddie Ediger and May Kirkhoff. So we're set to get things rolling here. Again, Tabor gonna try to get back on the uh, positive side of the KCAC, sitting here at one and one, won their first match at McPherson, lost the second one at Kansas Wesleyan. And this will be the first time Avila has been in this gym as far as we can remember for volleyball. New to the conference last year and we're ready to get things underway. So looks like Tabor will get the start. Number one, Samantha Smith. She's been one of Tabor's steady servers all year long. She's going to get it started tonight for the Blue Jays. Immediately, immediately you see Avila going to the freshman paying. She does not put it away. There's a nice shot by the Blue Jays. Eagles called in the net, Tabor point. Okay. Blocked out of bounds by the Blue Jays, so we'll go back over to Eagles, one and one. We'd like to mention our crew up in the studio as well. Mr. Chris Glanzer, our tech guy who helps make all this possible, and then Micah Rickert, he'll be bringing the replays to us this evening, I believe, as they are both up in the studio. Good hustle there by Sam Smith to keep the ball into play. Free ball going over, Avila puts it away. 2-1 Eagles. So the libero Aspen Kridner serving for Avila. Ball goes out of play, 2-2 two -two as we see number five, Taylor Morrow. 5'7 sophomore from Washburn Rural High School in Topeka, replacing querying. That's one thing that Coach Ganowan has been doing, giving querying a little bit of a break on that back and bringing Morrow in to serve. Especially in our gym, that's not a bad idea to try to get some people in as it's very hot. So for the Eagles, number 16, Lauren Harrell, 5'8", sophomore at Overland Park, Kansas, transfer from Western Colorado University, will come in to serve 
for Avila. Up 3-2. Short serve. Nice dig there by Ortiz. to Avila. They put on a little bit of a run here. Seems like they've really liked that short serve and it's been effective there. Have an error there by number 18. Sophomore out of Leewood, Deovian Williams. Got a little anxious and hit it into the net. That short serve for Avila seems to be at least part of their game plan here early. As we see Number eight, Caitlin Crisp, come in to serve, replacing Dirksen. Wilkins replaces Valerie for Avila. Hebert's attack just a little long. Avila's widened out a 7-3 lead on the Blue Jays. Eight three Avila here in the early stages of this contest. First set, and that serve is out, putting the ball back on the Blue Jays side. Eight four, and Groff will come back to serve. Marissa Macias back in for the Eagles, replacing Alexis Eamon Wilkins. Good serve by Graff, deep in the court. Serve short, 5-9, ball goes back over to the Eagles. See some of the students start to filter in. Some of them just getting out of practice, getting uh, a little bit of food in them, and hopefully they're going to be starting to show up some more. Ray Drury to serve for Avila. Like that might have been out. Nonetheless, Hebert with a nice put away for the Blue Jays brings the ball back on their side as we see Querying coming back in for Morrow. Sandoval to serve for the Blue Jays. Tabor trailing 6 9 here, again in the first set.
nice job there by Hebert. The block attempt goes into the net on the Avila side. We also have our filmer, Allison Zaleski, helping us out tonight. She's on the tight camera doing a great job for us. That ball sells just long. Attack by Quering. Avila just doing a nice job timing the blocks. Let's see if Tabor make the most of this one. That's one way to just keep them off balance. A nice dink over by Samantha Smith. Good heads up play. Tried to hit it through him twice, didn't work. So we tried to throw the change up at him and dink it over. Good heads up play by the senior. Eight eleven, favor of Avila. Make it eight twelve. Number seventeen, Kridner serving for Avila. Ball just tips the top of the tape. And that's going to be two hits there by Avila. Nice job by Quaring. Morrow back in to serve. Quaring will come out and take a quick break. See Coach Ganallen giving Quaring a few pointers there as she heads to the end of the bench. That's something Tabor is going to have to get figured out pretty quick as the big sophomore from Leewood, Kansas, Williams. Six footer, they like that short set, and she's just been picking us apart a couple times with that. As Coach Ganow is going to call a timeout, hopefully, he'll get that fixed. So, we have a timeout on the floor, we'll take it with them. 13 to 9, Avila here in the first set. We're back to action here at the Tabor College Gymnasium. Early stages of the KCAC conference regular season action. Avila on top of Tabor in this first set, 13 to 9, as both teams trying to fill the other one out. Coaches are looking to try to find some adjustments that they need to make. Have a Discussion here between the official and Coach Ganow now the timeout, not sure what it is. Looks like he's just uh, bringing up the speed on something that the two officials talked about at the timeout. Now we're back to action with number 15, Claudia McIntyre, putting the ball in play for the Eagles. Morrow's pass to Smith. Dirksen with the put away. The block is good by Williams. And she's definitely giving the Blue Jays some problems here in the early going. They go back to the short serve. Nice cross court attack by Groff.
Diving attempt there by Crisp comes up just short off of her arm deflected out of bounds as Avila has opened up a 15-10 lead. The lineup for Tabor we have Hebert, Smith, Graf, Sandoval, Morrow, and that's the one that just let the ball go out and Ortiz. So service is long, back over to Tabor. This Graf would like to have a new ball. The ball does get slick in here quickly again. It's very warm in here. <coughs> Balls do get wet. Our ball rollers again, Maddie and May, do a good job tonight keeping the ball dry for the players. And they get to practice their bowling skills, rolling the ball down the sides over there as well. So Ortiz makes the pass to Smith, back set for Hebert. <coughs> Tack by Graf, just a little long. <coughs> That's something that you like to see from the Blue Jays. They're they're trying to go after it. They're not just Patty kicking the ball over all the time. They've hit a few long, but they'll find their groove here for too long. 17-11, Avila. Nice job by Sandoval, deflected out of bounds off the Eagles. Bring the ball back over and Sandoval will get a serve as we see Querying checking back in for Taylor Morrow. Querying out of Bradshaw, Nebraska. Is really one of the keys to our offense, as, as a lot of them are, but she's played a lot as a freshman last year, got quite a bit of experience. Nice hustle by Tabor. And the Blue Jays crawling back in this a little bit. Well, 17-11, they've cut into this lead a little bit, 17-13. Sandoval back to serve once again. Good job by Marissa to get that ball back over. Good block by Brittany to keep the ball up in the air. And now we have it over to Querying. And there's what I'm talking about. There's a big key to our offense right there. She's able to put that ball away because of a beautiful set by number one, Sam Smith, our senior setter. Puts the ball right where Kareen likes it. The timing just beautiful as we see an instant replay there, which allowed, you know, the set was perfect, allowed Kareen to hit the ball straight down. And Avila could not react quick enough. So Tabor starting to find a little bit of rhythm here. 17-14, that ball's out, 17-15, to 15, and Avila said, and I've had enough, as Coach Majors, he's decided he needs a timeout. 17-11, to 11, now it's 17-15. Blue Jays trail by two. Sandoval's thrown a couple points together here for the Blue Jays. Let's see if she can keep it rolling out of the timeout. 15-17, Tabor down two, first set. Nice job once again by Smith. Earlier in the contest, Avila seemed to be passing the ball very well. Everything was right on point for the most part. And they were really setting the ball to Williams. Now Williams not in the game and their passing has been a little suspect here as of late, allowing the Blue Jays to 
make the most of the opportunities here as we see Tabor now tie it up at 17 all. See Coach Worth there giving out a few pointers to the squad. 17-17, Sandoval puts into play again. She's done a nice job of mixing it up a little bit on the serve. There we go again. Now that's a nice attack, but a good block by Avila. And the block goes deep enough beyond the Tabor back row. 18-17, Eagles. We see number six, Brundick, come back in for Avila. You know, you're looking down their roster, they're a pretty young team as well. So Tabor has a few seniors, Avila has a few seniors. This could be a pretty good matchup for several years. Avila seems to have weathered the Blue Jays storm here a little bit as they, after 17 all, gave up six in a row. It was 17-11 and 17 all. Now they're back up 19-17. Let's see if Tabor can get, this, get a stop here and get the ball back. There's a huge difference there with Williams off the floor. Tabor's been making some progress. 18-19, Avila on top by one. Ortiz back to serve. And she gets the, the home, home court bounce there off the net. As Ortiz, if you'll notice, she likes to get about as far back as you can. Boy, that time she measured it just right as the ball just hits the net and falls over. And that's one of the reasons she likes to get back. She likes to send the ball back, and that time is a little too long as it's uh, not for sure if that score is right at 19-19. There it is, 19-20, Avila. So we're starting to get into the nuts and bolts of this first set as it's now 20-19. to That's cross-court attack by Dirksen travels just wide. 21-19, critical Tabor gets a stop here on this, this point. And they get it. So Smith has done a really nice job of this set is when the pass has been nicer. She's, she's done a good job of getting the ball set up to our, our hitters where they need it. And, Sometimes in the past has been where not where she likes it. She has made the most of it and, and put the ball over the net into a, a hole. So that's what you get when you've got a senior kind of leading out there on the floor. 21-21. be nice for Tabor to finally get over the hump here and they have 22 to 21 as coach Majors wants another timeout so Tabor not only come all the way back and tie it up as they had a few times earlier now they've finally taken their first lead I believe um, if they were ahead I can't remember it was at the very beginning but first lead in quite a while so 22 21 Blue Jays be back with you in just a minute Back with you, 22-21. Tabor finally over the hump here in this first set. Smith going to try to keep it rolling. Be nice to come out of the timeout with a couple of points right away. Keep that momentum going. And nice timeout by the Eagles as they get the ball set up for number seven. 6'1", freshman, Caitlin Payne. Again, she's the one we talked about in the open about uh, one of the top in the conference when she's up in the front row. Now they've got her and Williams both up there, so 
We'll see if Tabor has made any adjustments with them in the front row. Gridner puts the ball over into play. Nice pass there. And that's one way to do it. Hit it clear away from them and over and in. So good play there by the Blue Jays as Dirksen put that ball away. Morrow now coming in to serve as we have C. Quaring going out. 23-22. Obviously critical point here. If we could get a point here to give us match point, that'd be big. As we see the Eagles tied up again. Number 16, Harrell. They transferred from Western Colorado for the Eagles. She's going to put the ball into play. First set's all knotted up at 23. There's that short serve. And Graf sends that one a little too long. It's going to be set point for the Eagles. And I never heard a whistle, uh, but the official did say two hits, it looks like. Having trouble hearing the whistle once in a while from up top. 24-24, Blue Jays have tied it back up, have fought off one set point. As we see Chris put the ball into play. The ball was tipped by the Blue Jays. At least that time they got up and got a hand on it. 25-24, set point once again for Avila. We'll have a set break interview with uh, head swimming coach Nathan Duell. We'll talk about his season as it's just getting underway. Once again, there's a nice set by Smith and Groff this time. Puts it away. Sometimes you make a good play, then you get to go serve, and you make a good serve. So let's see if that's the case here with Marissa. She put that ball away. Let's see if she can get a nice serve over and put the Eagles on the defensive. Nice block there by Brittany. There we go. That time Brittany did an excellent job of getting up in the face of Williams and causing her to have some opposition at the net. The ball tipped. We're able to put it away. Set point once again for Tabor, 26-25. Graf with another good serve. And Avila once again coming up big as that's number 10. Boldridge, only a 5'8 senior, but she gets up off the floor. And she has now been causing Tabor some problems. Avila to serve. Tied up at 26. Nice job by Graf. I was just about to say, maybe we can finish this off with their big lineup off the floor, but in comes 18 Williams once again. Oh, no, she's going back out. She's just going in for the, the sub for the libero, so she's out. Hopefully... Tabor can take advantage of that as Sandoval back to serve now up 27-26. That ball hit the ceiling. So threw Avila off a little bit. And there it is, a nice put away by number 20, Hebert. And that's going to bring the Blue Jays all the way back from 7-6 down, 17 to 11. Tabor comes all the way back and takes the takes the, the first set 27-25. And we have with us joining us uh, in between sets here as we, we do every every uh, every 
trying to get him adjusted there as we, uh, we've we got all of our equipment moved over from the soccer field, and so we got to make some adjustments that we, we try to do between sets as highlight some other programs or things that's going on here at Tabor. And we're joined with head swimming coach Nathan Duell. And, Coach, welcome. Thank you. And it's let's a great just talk first about, game there, wasn't it? It was. You know, 17-11, we're down six, come all the way back, fight off a couple of set points. That shows the fight that, that you like to see. Absolutely. So talk a little bit about, about your swimming team. Uh, sure. I know you've had one meet so far. Uh, you, you've talked a little bit about how you're using that as a little bit of a gauge is kind of what you need to work on. So how'd that meet go and, sure. and talk it was, about that? Uh, we were down in Edmond, Oklahoma, and uh, it was a very early meet. And as you said, we used we just kind of gauge some other things. We don't really look at a lot of you know time-specific uh, results because that's hard to, uh, when you're just early in the season, really get uh, best results. But uh, we looked at a lot of little things and different things, and, and from that perspective, it was a really successful meet. Yeah, when we talked, you talked about that, looking at technique and different things like that, and that's what you use that meet for. Exactly. So have you been able to put some of that stuff into practice yeah, a little absolutely. bit from that meet? We, uh, we, you know, we spent the next couple weeks here um, just kind of putting that to work, to, to use in practice with some speed and some, some really good work. So uh, the kids are working hard. Coach B, in the, our strength and conditioning coach, has them going really hard in the mornings in the weight room, and I think we're seeing a lot of results from that as well. Well, he's been a, a, a pleasure. Hadn't he been to work with? A great addition Absolutely. to our staff. He's working with everybody. What about how he's affected your team? Yeah, I tell you what, I my swimmers have told me, I feel what we're doing in the weight room in the water. I feel it making me better. And not only that, he's you know he's obviously knows his stuff and, and has their bodies you know performing well, but. You know, he motivates, too. He's quite a motivator, and he's, uh, he's a great guy. And, and I said to somebody the other day, whether or not Tabor teams are competitive this year, you know they're going to be fit and they're going to be strong right. because Coach B has got them working hard and, uh, and doing a lot of good things. Well, if you don't know who we're talking about, Coach B is Coach Boucher, and he, he's here as a criminal justice professor, and he has a background in strength conditioning. He's certified in some different areas, and he's just – He's just outstanding. He wants to work with every program. So, Coach, what do you have coming up next? When's your next competition? Yeah, we have some uh, a really exciting event coming up this Friday. Uh, we're in Topeka for the first annual Sunflower Showdown. Now, when we started this program here at Taylor, Tabor, uh, what was that, six years ago? Uh, this is our sixth year. Uh, we were the only program to have men and women. Kansas University had a women's team. We were the first one to start a men's and women's team, and now there are five teams. Right. And so we're celebrating that uh, with uh, with uh, a meet with all five teams: Kansas, Sterling, St. Mary, Barton, and Tabor, uh, in Topeka. It's the Sunflower Showdown, two o'clock on Friday, and uh, it's not just a, 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 com a competitive meet. Obviously, that's part of it, but it's also uh, a chance to to highlight and celebrate swimming in the state of Kansas. So we're using it as a recruiting event and inviting a lot of, uh, and all the teams are, inviting a lot of athletes out. And uh, yeah, we're, we're excited about that and looking forward to it. And, and just speak of that a little bit, as we have expanded swimming, you know, mm -hmm. and, and, and that hasn't been a big thing in our conference or mm -hmm. maybe in our state, but now it's really growing. And now yeah. our conference is actually going to have their, yeah. their own meet this our year, first, if I'm not mistaken. Our first conference championship meet, we have uh, Sterling, St. Mary, and, and Tabor. And then we have three associate members, uh, Lincoln College out of Illinois, Olivet Nazarene out of Illinois, and Midland in Nebraska. Now Bethel will start a program next year, so they'll join into that. And it's a great time. You know, people ask, was well, that a problem for you recruiting-wise? You know, more teams to recruit against, that's great. That's fine because it means that people recognize there are more opportunities and we're going to get uh, more homegrown talent here. Well, I'd also think that that probably will give you the opportunity to compete a little closer <laughs> once in a while. So, you know, if you're recruiting some kids from the state, yeah. they don't have to travel so far to watch them. You know, yeah, you may have a meet or two. And this year you're having a home meet. We are having a home meet in January. It's going to be our senior day. It's going to be in Marion. Uh, we're hosting St. Mary. And they're a second-year program. And it's, we've had a really good relationship with them. And... Uh, yeah, we're really excited to have you know, the, to really have a feel in year number six of, of a proper swim program with with all that that goes along with the championship meets and uh, and whatnot. You know, before this year, we usually had to travel at least three hours right for meets, and now uh, with some some teams that are near, we have only one meet that's longer than that. So right. that's exciting. Uh, certainly helps our budget a little bit. Sure. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we're we're just looking forward to. Uh, to celebrating swimming in Kansas. Good. And we're, we're having a little delay here. Um, we're trying to 
talk a little bit longer because we're having yep. some issues with the volley right. That's a new program we're using for volleyball this year, and we're having some issues, it looks like, with it. And, you know, it's something that we tried at the fall fling, and the officials actually had to run all of it. And so they should know kind of how to fix some of this. I, this I sure don't, but by the, this, by this is mandated NAI, by correct? the conference. It looks like conference. I've got to go down there and try to fix something, so um, I'll be right back. So Mr. Edgar is going to go down and, and work on uh, the program here. Uh, this is an A-Duel again. Uh, I am really blessed to work with, uh, with David Edgar on the, uh, in the SID department. That's the other job I have here aside from swim coach uh, as the sports information director assistant with him. I work with men's and women's soccer and softball. And I can tell you this, he would never say this, he would never ask about this, but David Edgar is one of the hardest working men uh, in college sports. He is out all the time and he is really supportive of all the programs here and uh, we're very fortunate to have him here uh, because this is the sort of thing he can do. Sit up here and broadcast and commentate and then zip down and fix something when they need to. Uh, it's not uh, always you know, convenient for him but he doesn't complain and he is just a, a real blessing to Tabor College. One of our esteemed alums, Tina Lowen, down there working on this program, trying to get things going. Tina had an incredible career here as a volleyball player and a basketball player, earning All-American awards in both sports. Dr. Carol Hunt down there, too. All right, it looks like they have things rolling. They're ready to go. I will pass a little time up here while Mr. Edgar gets things sorted out. Avila will serve first here in the second game. Tabor up. One game, zero in this best of five. Bit of a high turn. That's over the net, a free ball for Avila. Swing, nice dig. A little off balance, goes down the line for the kill. Kind of an awkward set there, and she had to uh, make an adjustment almost in midair, but a really nice play by Marisol Sandoval. Making that kill down the line, now Marisol moves into the serving position, 1-0. Taylor Queering checked in on the changeover. End of all serves, good. And that's a kill into the net. Tabor up quickly 2-0. That return was low. It was a difficult one to uh, set. A nice serve for Sandoval. See if she goes the same way. Goes a little deeper there, just a bit too deep, and that's gonna be a side out for Avila, 2-1. Vivian Williams checks back in for the Eagles, the big hitter up front. So the libero with the serve. Sandoval digs. And Brittany's kill is just out. Brittany Hebert with a big swing. That one just passed the line and we're even at two. Short serve, clearing, 
That's set. That time Hebert gets it. Oh, ooh, that's a nice save for Avila. It's over. There's another shot and Queering with the kill. It's blocked up. Here's the set, quick set. Over. Tabor ready for it. There's the swing that was tipped. Nice save by Sandoval. Queering. Let's see, not hit. That went off the net. So that is going to be out. She went down the line with it, but it did not make any contact with Avila defenders and goes out. And that's a 3 2 Avila lead. Aspen Cridner, the libero for the Eagles on the service. That one hits Jordan Hortstick down the line. The brave uh, men's basketball GA didn't even wince. That is out, and it is 3 3. No, Monet Ortiz. That one is in, and that's an ace. Avila got caught in the in between there. Savannah Stevens pulled away at the last minute, but that thing dropped in. Ortiz back on the service game, up 4 3. That set was too deep, but that thing was put away by Olivia Dirksen. Service return got away, and Olivia was right on the spot to put that thing down. Good spinning service return. That one's over. Ortiz with the dig. That's set. And that's Dirksen again. A nice set by Samantha Smith. And Olivia Dirksen puts that one away. Dirksen, the six foot junior from Gossel. Ortiz just a little long on that one. That's going to be a side out. We'll see some changes for the Eagles. Number 16, Lauren Harrell will check in and take the ball to serve. Ortiz with the... That one is long off the hand of Marissa Graff. Marissa, big, powerful player. Let's see her get into a little bit of a rhythm here. She had some good kills in the first game. That's a short serve. Dug out by Sandoval. Queering. A little far away to go for that one. That's in the net. Violation. So it's Tabor's serve. 7-5. And a serve from Smith with the set, clearing. That's a kill off the Eagles. Now the Blue Jays have a little bit of breathing room. 8-5 still with the serve. Samantha Smith with the ball in her hand. Mid-range serve. Set up for a cross quarter. Smith with the dig. Ortiz with the set. Graf gets it back over. Avila sets up, and that is long, and it's nine to five. It's the kind of rhythm we were looking for. It was missing for much of the first part of game one. We saw it come alive late in the second game, and here they go starting game late in the first game. Here we go starting the second game with a diving set. Softly put over, teased. Queering with a running kill. <laughs> Taylor Queering, a 5'9 sophomore from Bradshaw, Nebraska, with major hops. Queering's one of the hardest working athletes at Tabor College. The uh, stories of her post-practice workouts are stuff of legends. Back in action, cleaned up the court. Smith serve, mid range, little deep. Oh, that's some athleticism there, but they go into the net. They had to make too many adjustments mid air, did the Eagles. I think they got into the net there. Some athleticism up front, but it was 
too much. And now it's a six point Blue Jay advantage. Smith goes cross court with this serve. Set, that one was tight. She gets called for a scoop, a double hit, yes. The set was low and uh, Williams went high for the kill and ended up double hitting. So now Tabor with a seven point lead. So they do some more cleaning of the court. If you haven't been here to the, uh, to the borough, it can be a warm environment. So if you're going on the floor, there's probably gonna be some sweat on there. And Mr. Ettinger is back. He has solved the problems of the world. And he is back and ready to take over. We've had a great start here to this set. Yeah, I didn't solve any problems. Uh, we're just going back to the stone ages where we're using paper and pencil to keep score, and it's more reliable anyway, so. Blue Jays are rolling here right now. They seem to have Avila kind of discombobulated, having to make some, uh, some adjustments. And here they have a timeout, and I'm going to let you uh, take over. <laughs> it's been fun filling in for well, you. Well, uh, thanks, Nate. I appreciate it. And that's, that's just part of our SID staff, Nate. You know, we talked about he's swimming earlier. He does SID stuff for us and does a great job there as well. And you'd probably have more luck trying to figure that thing out than I would, <laughs> Nate, I tell you. But the Volley Right program works great. But uh, if it doesn't work, we got to go back to uh, paper and pencil. And that's what we're doing. Well, so. any, like I, I said to them, if anybody can handle it, Tina Lowen. Yeah. She can. She, she can get her figured out. And if not, she'll bluff her way through it <laughs> enough. But, you know, the important thing is if the score is right, the score is right. That's that's the thing. So. All right. Well, I will let you take All it right. the rest well, of the way home. For and hopefully in we and have a short one tonight. Yeah, it'd be great. Thanks a lot. We'll see you. Well, we sure appreciate, like I said, Nate stepping in and helping out there. I knew when I left, I looked up here, he had the headset on, he would be carrying everything just fine and going well. So uh, if if we start uh, not playing as well, I'm gonna leave and tell Nate to come back and commentate some more and we'll figure it out. But uh, Lady Blue Jays on top here, 13 to five. We see a replay there of uh, some replays from the last set. Blue Jays, um, some of their highlights there. And again, Micah Rickard up in the studio with Chris Glanzer doing some work. I won't miss, m mention Allison's name, who doesn't like me mentioning her name that she's filming for us, so I won't mention her name tonight. But good camera work. And there, Avila gets back on track a little bit with a, a block of Marissa Graff. Two subs for Avila checking back in. 13 to six, I thought it was seven, but it must be 13, six. Tabor. And Blue Jays catch a break there with Graf's attack going over and off the hands of the, of the Eagle blocker. It's 14, six now. You know, that first set, really liked to see the fight from Tabor. Again, got down big, come all the way back, fought off a couple of set points, and that's got to get, and then won the first set, and that's just got to give you confidence. Number four coming in for Avila. Drury, she's five foot tall. And off comes number 18, Williams. She's six foot tall, so they're giving up about a foot there. But it looks like Drury's gonna be their server in this situation and give Coleman a break, or excuse me, Williams a break. Just played there by the Blue Jays. 14-8 now. Attempt 
by Dirksen and Graf goes out of bounds. So you can see on the scoreboard on your screen there, Tabor did win the first set, so we're up 1 0. It's a best of five. If you're just joining us, we see that serve hit the net and go out. If you're just joining us and haven't watched a lot of volleyball here, the college game. We play best of five to 25. You have to win by two. If it does go to the fifth set, then they'll pair that down to 15. Still got to win by two. We see number nine, Melody Valencia, 5'2 junior from Peralta, New Mexico, in for Tabor for the first time tonight, I believe, unless she came in when I was trying to fix the computer. Serving that goes out, and we'll see Dirksen come back in for Valencia. We'll set our lineup here for the Blue Jays. Number 20, Hebert, one, Smith, four, Graf, 13. The libero in the blue jersey is Ortiz. We have next to her is number five, Morrow, and then we have number two, the freshman, Sandoval. Morrow's pass right up to Smith, a nice set to Sandoval. Nice timing, once again, a nice pass. A good set, ball put away. The block goes down on the Eagles side. 16-10, Tabor. Blue Jays starting much better this set. Nice serve by Marissa. Seventeen ten. Blue Jays, if you remember the last set, we were down 17 11 before we made our comeback, so no time to let up. Volleyball is such a momentum game. One point can turn into four or five in the blink of an eye, and your seven point lead could be down to three or four in a hurry. Seventeen eleven, Blue Jays on top. Back set to Hebert. She puts it across court. Now a quick set. See if Tabor can take control of it right here as that ball is deflected. Good job by Sandoval. The block did send the ball up in the air to the back row, and the Eagle couldn't quite get over in time to save it out of bounds. Tabor's keeping that seven point lead here at 18 11. Wearing with the attack. Nice job off of number seven, Payen. And Tabor's opened up a 19-11 lead as the Avila bench is now pretty quiet and subdued. They're not for sure what's going on this set as Tabor's really opened up a nice lead, 19-11. No time to mess around here as we see Sandoval put the pressure on him with a good serve to the back row. And Avila won't go away. You're gonna play this game on the collegiate level, you're, you've got some fight in you for sure. It's 19-12. Tabor. Technically, we could swap points with them and go ahead and put this set away, but let's see if we can get the ball back right here and get some more serves on our side. That combination has just been working really well today is when you give, again, like I said earlier, you give Samantha a good pass She's gonna put the ball where her hitters can put it away. And we've got some of the best hitters in the conference. So an force there by Ortiz, which you don't see often on the serve from her. But it's 20 to 13. 
favor of the Blue Jays. Number 27, Hannah Mass, another sophomore from Raymore, Missouri. Transfer from Missouri State University. She'll put the ball in the play. There's that short serve again. And that time, Samantha tried to get it over and surprised him and didn't quite make it. So the ball will stay with Avila, 20 to 14, in favor of the Blue Jays. One fourteen Tabor as we see Queering get just enough of that, get it over and down before the Eagles could make a good attempt on the ball. Smith gonna put the ball into play here, gonna make up for that air she had a second ago. She had a good serve. That time our set wasn't where it needed to be. Aquarian tried to hit that with the left hand as the ball floated on her a little bit. I'm, I think I'm jinxing Sam with talking about her sets. And you know, even your best setters will, will make an error like that once in a while. And you see her bounce right back. Good hustle by Gridner. And that one's going to fall on the Avila side. 22 15. In favor of Tabor. Morrow's serve just carries long, just a few inches out. Ball go back over to the Eagles, 22-16, in favor of your Blue Jays. Graph with a nice attack. That ball was tipped and out. Goes back over her head and out of play as we see Hebert quickly check back in, as does Melody Valencia. She'll come in for Dirksen so she can serve and give Dirksen a break. 23-16 in favor of the Blue Jays. Once again, Tabor won the first set, 27-25. and firm control. It's 24-16 as you hear public dress announcer Mike James tell the Tabor fans, get on your feet, it's game point, set point. Valencia sends the ball over and we have an Avila player go down, hope she's okay. And there's the good set and the put away. So Tabor comes back strong in the second set after having to fight the whole first set. And Tabor looked very good this entire set. Coming away with the 27 to 16 victory. I'm joined here by Dr. Carol Hunt and trying to help her get her headset on here. She's having a little trouble with the earpiece. It flipped the wrong direction. And, you know, Dr. Hunt's been around a while, but these, these fancy headsets are getting to you, Dr. Hunt. Yeah, I'm technologically challenged here. <laughs> well, Dr. Hunt has joined us for our second uh, interview here tonight, and she is our Champions of Character um, leader here at Tabor. And a little bit, talk a little bit about that program, Carol, here on our campus and, and what, what, what you do with it. Okay, the NAIA stresses champions of character, and they have the five core values, which are integrity, respect, responsibility, sportsmanship, and servant leadership. And I try to keep that cognizant on our campus. Uh, 
the conference, the KCAC has awards, and I make sure that we have uh, nominations in for those awards, like uh, Athlete of the Year, Male and Female Athlete of the Year, Coach of the Year, Male and Female Teams of the Year. And I always get a little uh, discouraged when we don't win all of them. But this last year, we were fortunate to have uh, Sean Reed as the coach of the year. Good. So, and, you, and you've really taken that role very seriously here, as, as we've all witnessed here at Tabor. And the conference has taken notice. As Commissioner Scott Crawford has asked that you go to each campus and present. So talk, talk a little bit about what that entails, what you do when you go on those, those visits. When I go on those visits, I usually talk with the uh, athletes, the, the, their SALT or student athlete leadership team or whatever they happen to call that. And I, I made a, some video clips and, and one of those is integrity. And I show that to the students and then we talk about what integrity is because to me, that's the most important one. If our integrity is there, then respect, responsibility are gonna fall into place. And then I talk with the coaches. And what I talk with them is, do we develop character in our athletes or does sport reveal character? And I talk about um, bracketed morality. A lot of times when we're in a sport, anything goes, you know, we can berate officials because it's in the name of sport. And talk about uh, social values or uh, moral values. And everybody has social values like hard work, uh, teamwork, but not everybody has the moral values, which is honesty, integrity, those kinds of things. So how many of those visits have you made so far? How many campuses have you visited so far this I've just this been able to get one in. I've tried to schedule each of them. Uh, like we on our campus, we're really busy. So are coaches, so are athletes on other campuses. But. Uh, throughout the year, I will make sure I get to all uh, 12 campuses besides our own. Okay. So besides, uh, that's a big part of what you do here, obviously, but I know you're semi-retired. Um, you've been here and served Tabor very well for a good number of years, and we, we joke with you a lot about that, but uh, you, you take it in good stride all the time. But what else are, are you still doing here at Tabor College? Well, I do a lot with site administration. I'm in, in, basically in charge of that. I don't have to be at a event. I have to make sure that somebody is there. And I am obviously here at volleyball. I do the majority of football games, the volleyball games, basketball, and then a lot of baseball and softball. So I'm not gonna put you on the spot and say which one do you enjoy the most, but um, I'm sure you enjoy all of them. I do, I, I enjoy doing all of it. If I didn't enjoy it, I wouldn't uh, be still doing this. Right, right. Well, we've been joined here by Dr. Carol Hunt. Uh, she's one of the associate athletic director here at Tabor College and has many roles and has throughout the years. And I know I learned a lot from her when I was here as a student. And one of the reasons I wanted to come back to, and, and I really enjoy working with you, Dr. Hunt. And, and she's just a, a, a great lady who will do anything for anybody. The students know that, the faculty and the staff know that. And we're just, we're really blessed to have you still hanging around our campus after a few years of service. Well, thank you, David. So, all right. Well, we've been visiting again with Dr. Carol Hunt, and we wish her the best, and we'll let her get back to her administrative duties, which usually entails sitting in the chair by the door and eating popcorn. So, um, no wonder she likes that job. She does a good job at that. Um, but uh, she has been here for a good number of years and, and really enjoy visiting with Dr. Hunt. Start of the third set, if you're just joining us. Tabor dug themselves a hole in the first set, down 17-11, fought off a couple of set points, won 27-25. Second set, just the opposite. They came right out of the gates, looked like they were primed and ready to go, had a big lead pretty much the entire set, won 27-16. Now they're trailing here 3-0 in this set as uh, it seems like when Avila can have their, their two big blockers up front and hitters up front, obviously that gives anybody problems. Uh, but Tabor's really been able to offset that by making good runs when they're not in the front and getting just enough points when they are in the front where they can 
come out on, on top in the first two sets. Nice shot by Marissa Graff as he sends that one deep to the libero in the back. Cridner off her shoulder out of bounds. That breaks the three point run to start this third set by the Eagles. Three to one Avila as Marissa Sandoval, freshman from Albuquerque, New Mexico, puts the ball in play for Tabor. Nice heads up play by Hebert as she saw the open spot, pushed the ball over. As we see a replay on it right here, we see the nice quick set by Samantha. She goes up to put it away and draws her arms back like she's gonna hit it, then just dinks it over to the open spot. Avila had a hole on our, our right side, their defensive left side, and she found it. That one goes out of bounds, two to four. Favor of the Eagles as the ball goes back over to Avila for the serve. Number 27, Hannah Mast, 5'7", sophomore from Raymore, Missouri. Positions herself on the far left side of her court. Sends it back to the middle to Sandoval. And once again, Hebert tries that same side. That time, Avila did pick up on it. It's a little late and couldn't do a lot with it, but did keep it off the floor. Nonetheless, it's still effective as the ball goes back over to the Blue Jays and Ortiz. Once again, Ortiz, she won't even be in your picture here for until about now. And there she goes with our switching our cameras. She likes to get back on that serve. And we hope you enjoy the, the multiple cameras we have. We have two going here at volleyball. Uh, we're, this is the first year we've done that with our volleyball. Second year overall. Uh, again, purchased some equipment so we could do that. Do more than just one location. So our gym can be covered. Our soccer and football field can be covered and uh, use some graphics to make it a little better to watch from home so you're not just watching one camera sitting there. And we try to commentate all of our events here as well. So we, you're stuck with me in volleyball. Uh, we have some other people that like to do soccer and football and, and we'll do basketball and baseball as we move on throughout the year as well. We're glad you tuned in to watch. It's four to five here in the third set. Tabor again has won the first two sets. Smith sends it deep. That time, number 18, Williams tried to cut a little too fine hitting it cross court, but that, I think that's part of early on she had her way with hitting the ball straight down and wherever she wanted. Then as, as the match continued on, we've had some girls get up in her face and at least get some hands on some balls and now she's trying to go around people, which caused it to go out. So hopefully we found something there. And there we get again the friendly roll here at home. A little home court advantage there as Sandoval finds the net. And the ball finds the floor on the Eagles' side. And Tabor now, after trailing 3-0, come, has come all the way back and has taken a one-point lead at 6-5 here in the third set. There you see that time Williams just pushing the ball over instead of really hitting it. So whenever you see somebody who is a very aggressive hitter resort to start to hit the ball wide, start dinking it over, maybe you're in her head a little bit. We hope that's the case. Because when she really gets her rhythm going, we've, we've had trouble matching that. And we see the sub from Coach Majors there is Jury comes back in for Williams, again, giving up that, that height. Obviously, Coach believes Jury is a better server here and can move on the back row maybe a little bit better and gives his big girl a break. So, knotted up at six, have a little serve. Nice set there, back set from Samantha Smith. Quarian is on her game tonight. Again, volleyball is so critical with the passing. Just split second, a few inches here or there could really make a big difference. And right now, Smith is getting the ball to Quirin and Quirin knows what to do with it once you get it in her wheelhouse. We see Morrow come in for Quirin and she has served. Again, that's kind of been the pattern for the Blue Jays. Nice shot by Graf. She's right around the blockers up front. 
know if we have a replay of that one or not. Yes, we do. Here it comes. Watch this. Comes right to the right side of the blockers. And right to a hole in the back. Didn't go cross court, just went almost straight down. Good dig out by Ortiz there. Sandoval puts the ball back over. And that one was cross court and down. So that's Caitlin Payne again, a good girl. One of the girls we talked about in the opener and she uh, found the way there to get the ball over and down. Tabor still leads 8-7. Brundrick in to serve for the Eagles. And there we see Avila get the friendly bounce off the net. Not the home, home court bounce, but the friendly bounce for the visitors. Ball game is tied up at eight all. Nice pass by Morrow, Smith, and Dirksen with the attack. Ortiz in the right position there, and once again, good set. Sandoval with the, sends the ball over the net. There's a nice shot by Graf off the block, out of bounds. We see Hebert jump back in for the libero Ortiz. And Valencia checking in for Dirksen. So Ganawan, partway through that second set, decided to start resting Hebert when we go to the back. And Valencia in to serve. So again, our way our gym is set up, if you can find somebody who can put in a few minutes here and there to give somebody a break, hopefully that will work. It's a good attack by the Eagles. Goes cross court in the back corner. Knocks the match up at the set up at nine apiece. Graf is on as well tonight. She's been hitting the ball really well. Earlier in the match, in the first set, she sailed a couple of those long. I made the comment that that's okay. She was trying to get a rhythm down. She was attacking the ball. Now you see the benefit of that, staying with it, playing to win, not playing not to lose, playing to win. We're gonna keep the pressure on them. And that might be one of the ugliest volleyball plays I've seen from both sides, the way the ball was just on the net, kind of being dinked back and forth and slapped over. We say replay of that point. I don't even know if I want to watch it, but it's what happened. And uh, that's just one of those you kind of chalk it up and move on. 10-10, set number three. Call as Hebert was in the net. Now, we haven't seen that hardly at all from the Blue Jays tonight. We've Avila's been in the net a couple times. I believe that's Tabor's first in the net call. So far, playing really a pretty clean game. As Quarian's going to come back in. Hopefully, she's got her quick breather and ready to go as Morrow exits the game. Morrow rotates to that front row. Coach Ganam will pull her back off and put Quaring back in. Good serve there by Sandoval. And Sandoval is one of the better looking freshmen that we've seen in a while. Last year we had Quaring, a very good freshman also, and Marissa can just, Maricel, excuse me, can just do it all. She serves the ball well, hits it well, plays good defense. Um, she's gonna be, a, be fun to watch. That ball kind of slingshotted back. Avila, I'm telling you, they're just keeping it alive, and there they can't do it. Finally, on the third attempt over, give Avila credit, keeping the ball off the floor. Just Sometimes you just have to stay alive and keep fighting, and there they did for two 
two passes over the net and the third one come back over. They just caught on their heels a little bit too far. 13-11, Tabor's opened up a two point lead here in set number three. Pushed over. With all the excitement going on tonight with the uh, computer not working and everything else going on down below. I forgot to mention some of our sponsors. I'd like to do that as we see the ball passed over. Tabor up 13-12. And once again, we've been hitting the ball so well, so aggressively, we've caught them off balance with a couple of the uh, softer shots going over the net. But some of our sponsors is Paul Bruck State Farm Insurance at 2121 North Tyler there in Wichita. 316-721-8181. Contact Paul for all your life, home, car, insurance, and more. He's been a faithful uh, supporter of the Tabor College Blue Jays for many years, and we sure appreciate Paul and, and his business there back in Blue Jays. Fleming's Mini Store All here in Hillsboro, 407 South Date, 620-947-0184. Find solutions to all your storage needs with proper security measures at Fleming's Mini Store All. And our last sponsor for the game tonight, the Mennonite Found Brethren Foundation, 200 East D Street in Hillsboro, 620-947-3151. Giving meaning to money, plan, giving, service, fund management, championing stewardship. As we have a timeout, that would have been a really good time to bring you those sponsors, but we went ahead and did anyway. And if you've not been to a game here at Tabor, in a while, if you're an alum, we encourage you to come back and visit as you'll see a marked improvement once you walk into our building. We have a, a floor that uh, has been put down. It's got the big Blue Jay on the floor. We've got a nice entryway into our gymnasium now that houses our volleyball and basketball teams. We have the courtside grill, which is now uh, where the old fireplace used to be and uh, just a nice area there where you can get your burger or your chicken sandwich or your wings or Philly steak, whatever you like. Uh, of course, Java Jays is still right there. It's now combined with a ticket booth. And uh, it's just a, a real a big improvement. New, new flooring, new carpet. The bookstore's got a new entryway into it. So that's been made possible um, by some, some people over the years. And we also have a, a Hall of Fame board when you walk in and a, just a beautiful trophy display that Colby hit. I tell you, Colby is, is he can build anything. I, I don't, you, he doesn't, you don't got to give him anything and he can build something. He's just that amazing and he's done a great job um, as our entire staff has done. Uh, but you need to come back and visit that. Visit Tabor sometime and, and grab a burger there and come watch a game, whether it's volleyball or basketball you know, in here or out to our, our nice complex out south that houses football and baseball and, and tennis and some of that. But we're back at action here as uh, Tabor sent the serve into the net. And there's that nice back set again from Smith to Dirksen. And Ottawa's just, or excuse me, Avila just really struggled finding an answer for that. Earlier in the set, Earlier in the, the match, we were hitting the ball into their blocks a lot. Now we've kind of moved things around a little bit, some quick sets, some um, back sets, things like that. I've put them on their heels a little bit more as they do answer ours with one of their own. It's 17 to 14 now, Tabor here in the third set.
nice job by the Blue Jays. I just, I've said it a lot tonight, but our, our passing has been, for the most part, pretty much just on spot on. Our, our pass to Sam, our setter, and then her sets to our hitters. Uh, and really, it doesn't matter who all she's setting the ball to tonight. They're just finding ways to put the ball on the ground, on the floor, and that's what we need to do. As the block goes out of bounds, Tabor's widening their lead now up five, 19-14. And what we hope is this final set. We can get out of here in three, that'd be great. I don't have any other interviews lined up. I would find one, but uh, hopefully we don't need to do that. As we see Morrow hits one into the net there on the serve, 19-15 Blue Jays. Again, we'd like to thank all the people who don't get a lot of credit for what they do. Our, our table people, Tina and Bailey are there tonight, and Riley and Mike James, our ball rollers, May and Maddie. I'm gonna mention Allison, our filmer, whether she wants me to or not. We have Chris and Riley up in the studio, or excuse me, Chris and Micah up in the studio. It's just, uh, takes a lot of people to, to bring this to you, and we sure appreciate all their effort. You know, if you're watching that at home, that hit by Payne, she looks like she's almost parallel to the floor and, and off balance, And but that must be the way she hits. The first match I've seen her play, and she looks like she's off balance and, and out of control, but really she hits the ball like that almost every time, so this must be her way to do it. Um, now we see the Blue Jays starting to give us some points away here, just 19-17. Maybe looking for a timeout if we can't break it right here. Morrow sets up Smith who hits it to Graf. Nice. And they find the weak spot. And Coach Allen is going to call a timeout. And we're back here with you at Tabor College Gymnasium, set number three. Tabor won the first set 27-25. Rolled through the second set, 27-16, looked very good. Started slow this set, then they got ahead and was ahead by quite a few, and now it's a one point difference here in the third set as Tabor is not really, I don't know if they've been complacent a little bit with, with their lead, but haven't looked quite as sharp the last few points. Let's see if out of that timeout they can regain their momentum. And that'll work again. A little refocus there, a good pass set. And the ball put away as we see Hebert and Valencia checking back in for Coach Ganowen. 2018 Tabor. Five points away from a, a sweep of the Eagles. Nice serve. Nice and low, had some pace on it. So Valencia coming in partway through the, again through the second set into this third set, kind of been the rotation. Her coming into the back, giving Dirksen a breather. Her job is to serve the ball and keep it off the floor in the back. And so far she's done a nice job with that. Let's see if Tabor can take care of 
the ball there. They do get it back over and a little miscommunication by the Eagles puts Tabor up 22-18. So after that, one point, shut it down to one point lead. Tabor responds very well out of the timeout, puts it back up by four, three points away from the set as Coach Majors would like to have another timeout. A couple of things coming up this week is the soccer teams will be in action tomorrow. Women play at five. The men at 7.30 out here on Joel H. Ween Stadium on, on the turf there at the stadium. Be conference matches against Sterling. Then Saturday, Tabor football team will host Ottawa University. So both, actually both teams are on a little skid now. The, We've lost two in a row, and so has Ottawa. Uh, both teams still very talented to get things going in the right direction. So that is a 1.30 kickoff here at Joel H. Ween Stadium as well. So this week we have quite a few things going on here at home. So hopefully you guys can get out and watch some Tabor events in person. If not, please watch on the stream. And Tabor gave one away there. As Brittany got just a little anxious and in the net. She just saw the chance to put it away right there. Which again is good. You see her going for it, not, not playing passive. Just got a little over anxious, saw that open spot, and got herself caught in the net. 22 19. Tabor here in set number three. Good job by the Eagles keeping that off the floor, off the block. And that time, Hebert says, no, I'm not having it. She puts that ball straight down. 23-19 as Marissa Graff back to serve. It would be really nice to see the senior here serve these last two points for the Blue Jays. Yeah, 23-20. Cridner going to put the ball into play for the Eagles. That's their libero. She's in the white jersey, and the rest of them are in their black, and she hits it in the net. That's going to give Tabor set point and match point as we see Queering jump back on the floor for Morrow and the freshman Marisol Sandoval back to serve. 24-20. Tabor. Nice block. It, it, I, I've just grinned a little bit. It's kind of uh, interesting to watch down here. Sam's trying to jump with Brittany, and you know, Brittany, she goes about 5'11", close to six foot, and Sam, let's just say she's not, uh, not six foot. She's about 5'4", but she's trying to get up and help block, and uh, good effort there by both of them. 24-21, Tabor. And Ortiz sends that pass over the net. And that's not going to work as Williams puts it away. Tabor really needs to stop this right here, not give Avila any more momentum. Got the crowd standing here, wanting the Blue Jays to put this away and be done with it. Let's see if we can do it right here. Sam. Coach is wanting two on that. And they're going to call it to Queering. Tabor, but he's going to say Queering was over. And seems like they did miss a double hit on Avila, but they let the play go. And now, as you see here on our play, Queering pushes it over. And there's some collision between mainly Williams and Queering, completely unintentional on either part.
as I'm not for sure what the call is here as he blew his whistle pointed one way then the other and now he decided to call it. So Tabor is going to pull out the clean sweep 25 22 here in set number three. As we'll watch a replay or two here and then we'll be back with you to wrap it up here in just a minute. Back with you as you just finished watching some replays from the competition, and now you're watching our volleyball team. After they've uh, made a clean sweep of Avila, they're going to tear, tear the court down and put things away. First set, just to recap the night a little bit. First set, Tabor come out a little slow, getting down 17-11, storming back, fighting off a couple of set points, winning the first set 27-25. Second set, Tabor really took control early. They were up big and just maintain that lead the whole set, end up winning 27-16. The third set was a little combination of both, a little bit of a slow start, getting down 3-0 early. Then they came back tough and uh, just really played well the rest of the way. Uh, had a little lull there when they were up about 20 to 15 or so, 22-19, uh, end up putting it away 25-22. Again, keys tonight, they made adjustments to keep uh, uh, Avila's big girls off the net and, and started getting up and blocking them a little bit to have some success. Started really got really got rolling. Uh, our passing was overall, I thought, pretty good tonight. Smith was really setting the ball well because the pass that she was getting was pretty good, and then our hitters were just really putting the ball away. So Tabor, with the win tonight, moves to 2-1 and one in conference play, 9-13 and 13 overall. Avila will drop to 0-2 and 10-12. And and so, again, thanks for being with us tonight. We really appreciate everything. And if we'll hold on one second, we'll see if we can get Coach Ganowin up here for a quick interview.
All right, we're back here. A uh, little post-game interview, Coach Ganow, and uh, he's he's having the same trouble. Uh, he's technical. He's one of our technical assistants, and he can't get his headset figured out. We're in trouble. Uh, Dr. Hunt had that problem, but you know she she's uh, got a few years on on you, so you should be a little bit better with the technology <laughs> there. But Coach, uh, well, uh, quick interview here as we're wrapping things up. Uh, I'll give you my uh, my poor man's judgment. I think of how things went tonight, and you sure correct me whenever you're wrong. But let's talk about the first set. You know, you guys kind of dug yourselves a little bit of a hole, right? Uh, getting down 17-11, but uh, you showed a lot of fight and coming back, and then you fought off a couple of set points. And uh, so, first set, how did you feel that ended up playing out for you? Well, I think we just kind of started slow, and that's it. And I talked to the girls like, "Hey, we either gonna show up or we're not," because. That's what it is. And what I told them was, we haven't played in a hot gym yet because we've been away uh, for the last month. So this is our first match back at home. And, you know, we want to defend our home core. And I just realized it is hot. I know I'm wearing a jacket and stuff, and I'm, I'm hot as well. And they, they're the one who's playing. Right. So and I told them, like, I know it's hot. So this is our first step. Can we play in a hot gym when it's our home court? Right. You know, we, we had some nice weather so that it hasn't been as hot as this. And that's something that uh, the players persevered through. That's actually our word of the day was perseverance. And we did. So that, that it was just a slow start. And I think we're just not used to our heat, even though we practice here. Right. So, yeah. Well, the second set, I thought it was just the opposite. Man, you guys really come out and... And I missed the first few points, messed with the computer there, but you guys really just came out and dominated that second set and didn't really give Avila any room to breathe. Right. Uh, we, I made some rotations move. Um, I realized that Avila was playing the rotation two at first, and the first set, then I realized, hey, they have serve. So usually the uh, setters usually serve first. So you know what? I, I made our adjustments that we're going to play that way. And it paid off on our end, so that that was the adjustment. Well, then the third set, you know, you kind of got ahead, and then uh, you kind of had that little lull when you're up 22 to about 18, 17. It looked like we we weren't quite as sharp for three or four points there. They got it pretty tight again, and then you called the timeout. We come out of it and pretty much put the game away. So you finished it well tonight in three. Right, that's correct, and that's that's a great feeling because you know we uh, we had some. Uh, matches that went to five and that's not fun so yeah. to finish it in three and at home and you know now we get the girls to kind of just relax instead of still playing in this what uh, in the in the hot gym it's 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 rewarding for them and also it's rewarding to all of the spectators who's also here tonight right. so yeah it's 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 fun that way when you come on top and it's it's just a great feeling for everybody well one, one of the keys i was making comments to up here i thought was i thought overall Again, this is the, the poor man's view of things, but overall, I thought your passing was pretty good too, Samantha, most of the night, and, and she was really on. And right when I was bragging her up one time, she made a really bad set <laughs> that that Chris or the Taylor tried to hit. I keep calling Taylor Christine once in a while. I didn't do it tonight during the, during the match, but that she tried to swing it through her left hand. But really, I thought a key was I thought you they got the ball to Samantha without her having to chase it down too much. And man, she was putting the ball where all of the hitters could do something with it. Right, uh, well, uh, from that point of view, I know that they were serving short and we weren't unable to pass it. And you know, I was like, hey, maybe scoot up. And then it's the same server that's keep getting us. So uh, we made that adjustment to make sure that we do give our setters their best opportunity to set our hitters. And you know, it worked tonight. So, right. uh, you know, we're, we're happy on that part. And hopefully that's gonna Roll to Friday and then roll to Saturday. Right. Right. Well, and as Coach said, they do play Friday at Central and over in McPherson at Central College, a non-conference match. And then they will travel to Sterling on Saturday. And, Coach, what time is that match again? It's supposed to be at 6 on Friday because it's their homecoming night and uh, they want to move up. Uh, and then on Saturday it should be at 7 as okay. well. So we've kind of talked about some of the things coming up this week. And, and you know, the, the win, again, moves Tabor to 2-1 and one in conference play, which is going to put us in the top part of the conference. And and uh, nine and thirteen overall now, uh, but nice win tonight, Coach. Uh, your girls played well. I thought they really showed a lot of uh, signs of of, uh, of good things to come. And so, good luck to you the rest of the year. And uh, we're going to cut it from here and put stuff away. And thank you for watching. All right, thank you.